Hey, thanks for watching another video from WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. Today we're going to be working through a little job welding some parts made of 303 free machining stainless steel. It is not really recommended for welding, so when you weld 303 stainless, know that it can be welded, but it's not for critical applications. So I'm going to give you some tips and tricks on how to make the best welds on it today, and also some tricks for tacking to get done. All right, since quick. I have about 40 of these or more to do, I want to tack them all together first, and I don't want to take all day doing it, so I want to use a little trick uh, that I kind of call speed tacking. And basically what that involves, these are going to be welded onto these, these parts just like this. And by the way, this is a kind of a, uh, not all that complex of a machined part, but it's uh, got a good finish on it, and the machinist doesn't want to do a whole lot more to it when, when it's done welding. So I, got, I want to leave a nice, neat weld. I don't want to melt corners away or chew up anything. I want it to be where it just takes a little wire brushing or maybe putting back in the burnishing uh, uh, polisher and it'll be done and he can deliver them and he won't have to file or you know grind or do anything so I want a nice neat weld so in order to get that I want a nice small tack and I don't want it to take forever so the speed tacking thing basically just involves turning the machine up to an amperage like over twice as much as you would weld with and then giving it a blast um, just a very a very very quick blast and that will drive the It'll melt the metal and drive it together and fuse it a lot better than sneaking up on it and gradually increasing the amperage with a foot pedal. So this, this torch has got a finger switch on it, which is great for that. This is the new uh, Everlast. I'm not even sure if they're going to offer it, uh, but I think they are. Guy from Canada, uh, Duncan, somebody sent me this to, to try out, and, and I really like it. I really like the, having the switch on there. When I'm not using the switch, I just don't use the switch. I use the foot pedal, but it's there if I plug it in. So I, I put this uh, right where I want it, clamp this in place, kind of rock it in where it touches, and then rock it back to where I get a little bit of an arc gap. And then I've got the machine set really hot. I just bump this, and it's like a laser-focused tack. Tacks it before it even knows what's going on. So that's what we're going to do, and then we're going to weld them, and we'll be done. So I know I'm holding the torch rather close to my thumb here, but I'm being very careful. What you have to do is you have to set, be careful, you have to set the machine on some scrap material so you don't blow corners away, and everything, especially if you're doing sheet metal this way. Here's the arc slowed down to one-tenth the speed, tacking it and driving that metal in, tacking the corners. You've got to get some scrap metal and practice, or you'll, you'll scrap a few parts before you get done, because setting the machine to twice the amperage that you would weld at is uh, kind of riding on the ragged edge of uh, it's a little dangerous and you know a little risky. But uh, once you get it set on some scrap, it sure does speed up tacking if you've got a whole bunch of parts to do. And you just bump the switch just quickly, as quick on and off as you can. I probably could have used the spot timer. would have worked uh, well, but I'd just rather do it manually. Something you have to remember when you're welding 303 free machining stainless is you have to add enough uh, filler wire, push in a little bit extra to fill in the toes of the weld to prevent any undercut and graininess that happens on the, uh, and if you're welding 303 to itself, 308L, 308 is, uh, is a good filler rod, about as crack resistant as, as any and uh, cheaper than 312. 312 works great too, so does 309, but they don't work any better than 308 and they're more expensive. So. You can leave the rod in the puddle a lot of times, push a little bit of extra rod in there, and it'll fill those toes of the weld, where it otherwise would be, would, would be grainy because of the elements in the weld that want to act up on you. All right, here's some 12L14 leaded steel. This is the carbon version of the 303 free machining stainless steel. It's got lead added. Lead is not good for welding. It's great for machining. It lubricates, makes it cut like butter, but for, for welding, it's not good. Um, you've got, again, you've got to uh, add plenty of rod and keep a tight arc, and I'm going to show you in just a little while what happens if you don't. That's 12L14. The L stands for leaded. All right, a way you can kind of test sometimes and see if, you, if you've gotten a hold of some 12L14, if you don't know what it is you're welding, you suspect something's kind of funky. Uh, light up on it like this, sit there and soak the heat for a long time, let the heat soak. Everything seems normal at first, but then around the very edges of the weld, that diffusion line, you'll start seeing some stuff boil, and that is the low melting point lead starting to sizzle and boil all around the, uh, the puddle, and that's bad. That's, that's what messes you up. All right, 
again welding some more 12L14. If you keep a nice tight arc and you add rod, and don't do this, don't wash up on the edges without adding rod and long arc it, um, that's where you get undercut. And see how grainy it looks? It just it's really grainy. That's typical of 12L14. So keep a tight arc and add plenty of rod and don't weld, don't use it for critical applications. All right. Another thing about welding for machine shops is they miscut stuff all the time. So I had to build up this, uh, there was an extra relief cut in this thing, and so it had, took about 8 or 10 passes to get it filled up where it could be remachined and a good part uh, done again. So anyway, I'm all done today. Thanks for watching WeldingTipsAndTricks.com.